Number 107. A molecule with the formula AB2, in which A and B represent different atoms, could have one of three different shapes. Sketch and name the three different shapes that this molecule might have, and give an example of a molecule or an ion for each shape. Okay, so we basically just have to come up with three different shapes that all come back to A, B, 2. All right, not too bad. Not too bad with our little handy dandy molecular geometry chart going on over here. So let's just put in, I guess we'll just say A, B, 2. Now, they just want three different representations, right? So for the first thing is that we just go to our molecular geometry sheet, right? And we just look for the different shapes, but we have to have one A value and two Bs. So for example, all of these on this uh, molecular geometry sheet have A in the middle, but they have X's instead of the Bs. But it's basically identical. So in this case, we're just looking for two Bs that are around the A. And here is one of them, right, in a linear fashion, where you have A in the middle surrounded by two um, X values. So I guess we'll draw it like that. We'll do A, where we have, and maybe what I'll do is I'll put like a line here. Eh, I guess we'll put a We'll just do that for now. Okay, so here's one of them. Now let's just go back to the sheet and try to find another one. Now this A value has three X's. That would be three B's. So not that one, but here is one of them, right? Where you have a A in the middle with the two X's. So this is one. So maybe we'll put that down, A in the middle. In this case, I'm just gonna say that they're Bs. And you got one lone pair. Okay, so that's one other one. Maybe what I'll do is I'll just throw these on this side. And now one more, and I see that it's right here, right? The A's in the middle, surrounded by the two X's, and it has two lone pairs. So we get A in the middle, surrounded by two Bs, with two lone pairs. Okay, now there's obviously other ones, right? There's this one that has the two X's and this one that has the two X's or the two B's, but they just wanted three different total shapes. So that's, that's it for that. Now we sketched and we just have to name them. So this molecular geometry or this shape, remember when they're saying shapes, they're just referencing molecular geometries. So shape, molecular geometry, tomato, tomato. The first one was a linear shape or a linear geometry. So that's that. The second one was called bent or angular. Uh, generally bent is more used, but you could use angular if you want. And the same thing goes for the other one where this is also bent or angular, but I'll call it bent. Okie dokie. So we sketched it, we gave it a name, and now we have to just give a real life example. So the first one, I would say, okay, what element in the middle do I need to have that will have no lone pairs? It basically is the difference between having one lone pair or, you know, no lone pairs, one lone pair or two lone pairs. I guess we should start with this one and work our way up. Now, whatever that element is, we'll just say in this case that it has to have a single bond between two elements, right? And that central atom, whatever it is, has to have one, two, three, four uh, lone pairs. Now, remember that in order to make a bond, right, there was dot to dot, right? You always make a bond from dot to dot. So technically this one had one electron and this one also had one electron. And now how many total valence electrons did this element in question have? One, two, three, four, five, six. And if we look on um, the sixth group, 6A or 16, the first element that I see is oxygen. So 
oxygen would be in the middle. And maybe, I mean, you know, we just have to make it work. But maybe this oxygen is bound to two hydrogens. And now we have H2O. That's an example. So there's the first one. Now we just have to basically do the same process for the bent one. Who is in the middle? Surrounded by a bond and a bond, right? But now, um, let's see. If I, if I go here, notice how this one does not have the octet rule. This one we started out because that one was the easiest one. So there was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? Two, four, six, eight. That uh, A value had an octet. But if we just go back to here, this does not have an octet. Two, four, six. So let's just make it have an octet first. Now these are all representative of just how many atoms are bound. But this does not mean, you know, whether you have a double bond or a single bond. So whether I put a double bond here or remove it, it would be the same molecular geometry. So maybe I'm going to add a, um, a double bond on this side. And let's see if I put those lone pairs there. Two, four, six, eight. Ah, we have the octet. So now we say to ourselves, well, who's the element in the middle? Count up those dots. We had one, two, three, four, five. On their side, if we look on 5A or 15 for the group on periodic table, one right over, you know, to the left of oxygen, we will come up with a nitrogen. So it's a nitrogen in the middle surrounded by some elements. Maybe this one is an oxygen. Maybe the other one is also an oxygen. Doesn't really matter. Um, but then these guys just have to have an octet, right? So one, two, three, four. Whoop. There we go. And then this oxygen needs one, two, three, four, five, six. And we added one electron because this oxygen has now seven on its side. So we would just put like a, a negative sign here. But this is nitrite, NO2 minus. So our polyatomic nitrite has a bent uh, molecular geometry. And now we just have to do the same thing for this one. Now, A in the middle does not have the octet rule. It's got two single bonds. But whatever element that it is, right, and maybe I'll just highlight this, uh, whatever element this is has to have the octet. And we can't add any lone pairs, so we just have to add bonds. So maybe one and two. And now, two, four, six, eight, that has the octet. And now how many dots? One, two three, four. Group 4A or 14, that is lucky letter carbon. So carbon in the middle, uh, maybe surrounded by two sulfurs or two oxygens. Doesn't really matter. You could make it work. These would have to have four dots around them. And this would be CO2. Now these are my examples. Your examples don't have to match mine. If you have different ones, let me know in the comments. All right, we could talk about them. So yeah, I think this is the end. We did everything. We sketched, we named, we gave examples. So we are good to go. I hope this helped you. Let me know in the comments. Thank you for tuning in to watch this video. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, keep, keep learning. Always keep learning. And keep studying hard, okay? Good luck on your tests and quizzes. And I'll talk to you in the next lesson. Bye-bye.